Tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Nice one by Randy. Uh, have a beautiful day there in the Bayrada district. Let's give her a nice big round of applause and bring her onto the screen now. Good morning, Tig. How are you? Was that a little bit stressful? Um, yeah, I've got a MacBook. Oh, so, sorry. To hear that. And Safari does not support the platform of this, you see. So it was like, yes, so it's yes, downloading yes. Chrome and then getting in. I'm so, so sorry. Oh, yeah, a very, I, very occasionally people who are Mac users do have that problem because, of course, you, yeah. you will be using your own Mac uh, software, won't you, for browsing? And this particular StreamYard system likes to use Chrome. So apologies for any stress that's been caused to right. you. In some ways, you're here to talk about a stressful situation, aren't you? Before we go into that, can you tell us about uh, British in Portugal and what you do there, Tig? Lovely to meet you after all this time, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a long time, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. We've known each other online, but never never spoken in this way. So Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I, I lead, um, I co-lead British in Portugal with Rory Stewart, not the MP. Um, <laughs> Easy to add. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I, I wouldn't actually, actually, you say that, you know, I actually wouldn't mind a conversation with him because I, I think he's, yeah, be interesting. It'd we'll be see interesting. if we can organise it. Wouldn't yeah. that be a scoop? I'd love that. Yeah. Yes. Well, I would. I'd, yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting. Interesting to see. Um, because he's teamed up with, um, oh, gosh, what's his name? Alistair Campbell, isn't he? To really? Do... I'm not having him. I'm not having Alistair Campbell on this show. <laughs> I'm so I've got to draw the line somewhere from, from, from the point of view of public decency. No way. Got two, you know, really sort of conflicting, you know, yeah. ideologies coming together. Yes. And and they, they do podcasts and yeah. interviews. And it's really, I, yeah, I, I, I think it'd be interesting. Anyway. I, I, I'm, I'm all for it. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for a bit of, you know, people with different views coming together. Otherwise, how are we going to grow and learn and evolve our really? thinking? So, yeah, well up for that. But not, not a big fan of the Campbell. But anyway, yes, Brit British in Portugal then. Yeah, uh, I, I, co yeah I co-lead, um, obviously co-lead it with Rory. Um, and, and basically, it, it all happened six seven years ago with the well seven years ago now isn't it with the referendum yeah. um rory set up the group um had a few members on it i joined because i i like everybody else when the referendum happened it's like what happens now yeah right are we um what do we do are we okay in portugal aren't we okay in portugal you know and and of course nobody had any answers so I was, you know, and, and Rory saw me on the group and he said, would you mind being an admin? Because he saw some of the comments that I was making. I went, yeah, okay. And it just basically, it was that simple. It started from there. Mm. And we just started working together to try and help as many people as possible as we started to find out the answers. Um, and it, it was just, I can honestly say 2016, 2017 was chaos. Absolutely. Yeah, right. Because nobody knew. That was the problem. Normally, you know, sort of if, if you've got a health problem, you go to a doctor. If you, you know, you, you've got something wrong with your car, you go to a mechanic. But nobody knew. So That's we right. were literally having to find our way through it. And in the end, I um I then joined a group called um Brex Pats Hear Our Voice, and they were actually overseen by um well, sort of overseen by British in Europe, which is the umbrella group for all the British in groups across Europe. Of course, because it's not just Portugal, is it? Uh, no. Absolutely. Brexpats, that's interesting. That's not a, a phrase that's stuck around, is it? Brexpats, but that, that is still a group of people. It's, um, yeah, it, it's, sorry, I was just trying to turn off my... Uh, don't worry. We have a busy environment here. I'm, I'm going to add to it. I'm going to bring on um, another of our friends here. We're going to because he might have something to say about this as well. Um, Michael Heron. Uh, let's give him a nice big round of applause because he may have questions for you as well. And he's a, he's a Brexit. Hi. Good morning. Good morning to you, Michael Heron. And I'm bringing you into the screen because we can uh, be here with Tig James from British in Portugal. Would you describe? Hi, Tig. Yourself? Very nice to meet you. And you? Have, you, have you ever described yourself as a Brex Pat, Michael? No. 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 So I'm, I'm, I moved here before before Brexit. So. I see. Okay. Um, All right. Fair enough. And, you don't, and, and it's not a term expat or anything that, 
that we actually use. It was, it was the name of the group was, yes. and, and and they've had big problems with it because they don't even like the fact that expat is in it because we're immigrants. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, T, because I have no problem in saying I'm an immigrant. It's absolutely fine. Absolutely. We are British immigrants in Europe and in Portugal. We are immigrants, whether people like it or not. British, I mean, um, and I'm going to be really unpopular now. Come on, T. <laughs> <laughs> You know, UK UK nationals, whether you know, you are immigrants in this country. Mm. Can we that's not call it. ourselves brimigrants? Brimigrants. Hey, that's not bad, mate. That's pretty good that's for you. Right? That's, not that's not bad for nine <laughs> Morning, and, then, and then if you're from Birmingham, you could be a brummigrant as well, couldn't you? Oh, Which wow. is a special yeah, niche. Take, a special niche all of it. By the way, can I just say I'm loving the new staging, mate. You, if, whenever I think you can't take it up, up, up another notch, you do it, mate. I'm proud of you, man. Now, I'm... A, Tig, we'll come back to the, the main reason why you're here in just a moment. Sorry about all these diversions and transgressions here, but the, every day there will be something new in the foliage. Can you see what it is today, Michael Heron? I mean, I don't watch you every day, I'm not going to lie, so I've got no clue. But oh, you've well, got, is there, there's a bottle of alcohol in there somewhere. Yes, it's well spotted. It's Beran. It's not just any old bottle of alcohol. It's a Portuguese bottle of Beran, the medicinal It's horrendous, brand. mate. I'm not going to lie. I do not enjoy that drink at all. I've tried it multiple <laughs> times. It's horrible. <laughs> a very controversial atmosphere this morning. So you're not expats, you're immigrants. You might be a brimigrant and he doesn't like Beryl. Tig, where do we go from here? I don't know. I actually do like Beryl. Me too. Me too. I, so, I just leave now. <laughs> yeah, it's okay, let's get rid of you. Oh, look, you drink some now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right. Tig, uh, hey, sorry. Uh, so it's fine. What what happened after this situation, of course, and you've been very helpful with with the um, a British foreign national community here, is guiding them towards the WABC card system and to get registered and do that. And the mm -hmm. and the, the 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 next difficult bit it would seem, and why you're here today is to talk about what happens after that, right? The, how how Brits go from being WABC residents into citizenship. So there's a little bit of a blockage in the bureaucratic pipeline, perhaps. Um, it, it's not so much a blockage as that I think we need to start being really careful. Okay. Um, and I, I don't think it's, for want of a better word, a deliberate act by the Portuguese um, institutions here. I just don't think they, they realise and understand that things have changed for us and how they've changed. For instance, let me go back to what, what you've just said, because quite a few people still don't understand what WABC means. It's the withdrawal... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yes. the withdrawal agreement biometric card, which is basically the residency document that um, UK nationals have when they were resident before Brexit, pre-2021. So we come under the withdrawal agreement, therefore we have this, uh, we had residency, which we then had to exchange for the withdrawal agreement biometric card. Um, People often get confused with that they've got a biometric card and they think it's a withdrawal agreement. No, it isn't. If you came after 2020, you get an ordinary biometric card and you're treated as every other third country national because we're no, no longer EU citizens. Mm -hmm. So um, you get treated as Americans, Canadians, Chinese, Australia, whatever, any other country outside of Europe, you get treated the same. So that's so basically everybody that was resident in Portugal um, pre 2021, they should have a withdrawal agreement biometric card. I say should because not everybody has. Um, and I say this quite happily. If people wish um, to if, if, if people are still having a problem getting their biometric card, withdrawal agreement biometric card, by all means, message me on Messenger. And I oh, will try and it out. yeah, because it's the system is is just too difficult for people. Because Seth, again, I understand why they um, they haven't got the finances, so they they're doing what they can with what they've got, and that's yes. why all the delay has been for us as well. Um, and but again, the delay was completely unacceptable, totally yes. unacceptable. It's caused huge enormous problems people have lost businesses driving licenses can't get health care and people still can't get health care and that to me is you know they're putting people's lives at risk and that i will never ever accept as being reasonable
I can't. Well, and I have no idea this is going on. I mean, yeah. of course, these changes, when they're broad brush political moves, yeah. you never really know what's going to happen subsequently, do you? And then you find out, you get into the long grass. And I, I'm surprised to hear that it, it, on a personal level, of course, this is where things are, are struggled with and suffered. The, 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 the impact of this has been pretty terrible then for some people, you say? It has been horrendous. Right. It's absolutely horrendous. And bearing in mind as well, and it, yeah, because not having their withdrawal agreement biometric cards has meant that what they do is they'll go to the health centre to try and get registered and they won't be registered. They, the health centres flatly refuse to register people without the withdrawal agreement biometric card because they now say you should have a biometric card. Wow. I, and, and so, oh gosh, yes. And even with EU residency, as people were, were rushing to get here, um, and even people that hadn't rushed to get here that were, were residents, quite legally residents, they were going to health centres and the health centres were refusing to register them because, oh no, you need this and you need that, because they didn't understand their own systems. My goodness, right. So um, I still have people that aren't registered for healthcare. So they've done, their bit. They, they've done what they needed to do, which is to get their yes. WABC card, and then they're struggling at the front end there with health. Did you know all this was going on, Michael? Yeah. You did, right. Okay, I had no idea. Yeah. I mean, the, pro the problem with the immigration system in Portugal, because like, I remember back in the day, if you went, and it's not just with the CEF, it's with any institution in Portugal, depending on who you get to you know, uh, attend yeah. you there, you can get different information. And there's never consistency. There never has been. And that's yeah. why it's probably a good idea to use a professional like TIG or an immigration lawyer because they will know everyone there and they'll make sure that they get everything sorted. Yeah. And you are, you're, you're advocating then for people, TIG. That's what you're doing, is it, in this situation? Yeah, situation? basically. Um, yeah, it's um, I work with the embassy yeah. and we just try and sort out the, the mess that's, that's, that, that this is. Um, I mean... One of, one of the, what happened was last year in August, because li all we kept getting was excuses. Would you believe one of the excuses Seth used was that people were on holiday was the reasons why they didn't issue our biometric. Yeah, in Portugal, that's valid. <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, which, which, holiday, which holiday are we talking about? Yeah, which one? Yeah, how many? Um, then, and, and, and it, was, it was constant. Then it was COVID. Then it was Ukrainian refugees and whatever. But it was just excuses. Right. It, was, it was absolute excuses and we were getting nowhere. And then, I mean, the, the, the tin lid for me when I thought, you know, I'm so done with this now. Um, but whatever I did, it made no difference. The, I, and I knew the embassy were working very hard as well. They were getting nowhere. We would, it was just nonsense. And I had got people who were seriously ill, many people. that was, I had people with COVID that were refused oxygen. My goodness, because they didn't have the right paperwork. Because they didn't have the right paperwork and refused treatment in, in the pandemic. I'd got people with cancer. I'd got people with life-threatening illnesses, could not get health care. And all sorts of people were coming to me, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people coming to me, and we were getting nowhere. So basically, last August, I said, I'm done. I'm mm -hmm. absolutely done. And one, oh, it was so funny. I was sat here one and I got really angry. I got really cross. And it's, and, and I, I very rarely get angry. I get irritated, but I don't get angry. I got angry. Well, and on this particular day, they took you, to, you hulked, did you? I did. I right. turned into this huge green monster and I said, I'm done. And basically, I hit the press button. And I did a massive press spray. I said, I'm done with this. Right. And, and thankfully, uh, and I mean, the first one that picked it up was The Guardian, which was brilliant. And nice. then it just, it, really? yeah, it was excellent. It was excellent. Um, then The Telegraph, the um, basically, and it, and it was great. BBC Radio 5 picked it up with me. Um, and I just hit every, everybody that I knew because I was so done. And it went worldwide. And that was, and that um, I've been categorically told is the sole reason we now have our biometric cards, because the Portuguese oh. government were embarrassed globally. into actually, it yeah. globally were embarrassed into. And bearing in mind, you've, you've got to look at this in in other respects politically as well. You know, the 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 British embassy, um, the ambassador. I had met Portuguese MPs. I had I'd met British MPs. I had meetings with them, and nothing happened. 
and yeah. all the same excuses will yes. be given to them. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a perfect storm of excuses, that's for sure, wasn't it? Absolutely, but, but it was yeah. at the highest level these excuses were being given. Yeah. And it's yeah. absolutely unacceptable. And so, you know, it was then – and. Then what happened was, of course, I did the press, but and of course they were they virtually well the, the embarrassment was so great that it appears that they then decided to move, and they did then very quickly within a few weeks, within a month or so, within a month, suddenly we started it, it started to move, and you know contracts were being given to um, the camera officers to help people locally, and, this, um, and then we ended up with this system, right, to get people processed yes. and, and dealt with, right? Yes. Well. Thank you, Tig, for doing that. Thank you. I was, yes, I had no idea all of this was going on behind the scenes. It just like it this is all very seamless. So thank you. I have was. mine with me right, right here as a result. Well, now you've set it all up and, and um, put that pressure on and it's occurred in this way, it is a fairly easy process, right? When you get your, your booking and, and go and do the do, or, or has it been difficult for some people? It, for some, it's been incredibly difficult. And again, it's because of the, the glitches in the SCF system which right. no, comes as no surprise to most people. Um, it's, okay, when, when it's easy, it's an absolute doddle. Yeah. What the, one of the glitches on the SEF system is, is the payment process. And what they actually yeah. do is, um, is that you, you get a payment code, don't you? You, you? you have the payment thing come through and, and you yeah. click on it and you try and you try and pay. And But you have to wait 48 hours, but they don't tell you that. Oh, they so don't. you're freaking out because you think it's just gone hanging there in the internet. It's not working. So, yeah. and then, so we, we, we've tried to calm it, just wait 48 hours and please, and big capital letters on everything, please wait 48 hours. And then you can do it through your bank and it's absolutely fine. Um. But the trouble is, is quite a few, it didn't work. Oh, dear. So they didn't pay. Then, of course, you've got so, – so they are in absolute limbo because the system says they've had their appointment and their card is being issued, but they haven't paid yet, but they can't pay. So – and that, they're just stuck in this limbo. And then you've got other people that have paid that the SEF system says they haven't. Oh dear! They, they, you can I've, imagine they're stuck then, aren't they? They're locked in some kind of. Um... And I've, I've seen bank accounts. You know, obviously they, they've showed me they they they've given me the the bank accounts with with the actual entry in that they've paid, and SCF just won't accept it because it's not on their system. That's I mean that's often how it that's works, isn't it? We need to see it on yeah. our system. Doesn't matter what you've got there, right? It doesn't matter what proof you've got. Oh, there. Dear neck. Right. Um, apparently, did, this is no question to ask a first-time visitor to the show. Did you rip a blouse? This is your hulking out moment. But well, thank goodness, you thank goodness you did, uh, basically. It was close. It was yes. close. Well, thank you for doing all of that, Tig. And, and then we move on now to the next part of the adventure, as it were, in relationship to Seth. And yeah. this is where people have been here for five years and want to convert from residency to citizenship. It's a process yeah. that Michael is going through, and, and Tony yeah. says as soon as that clicks over five years, we're applying. What's the problem then for Brits doing that? Um, the problem is, um, can I just go back to what we were talking about, though, all the issues, because there are many, oh, so many other yes. issues. For sure, me. now we've got you here. Yes, yeah. Michael and um, I are riveted. The, um, the, the, there's many, many other issues of the cards not being delivered and then being returned to Seth and then people can't find them. Okay. Um, then you find out that they might be actually at your local SCF office. So you go and you're not let in. They won't let you see anybody. So you go away and you can't make an appointment to get it. So there's, there's, there's so many issues with the cards even now. And as I say, if anybody has any of those issues, message me on Messenger and I'll see what I can do. Because the other issue is we've got a phone number and we've got an email we can write to. When you email, they email back saying ring. When you ring, they say email. You're in a, a, a cycle and a circle that you can't break. Kafka-esque loop, yes. It's, and you can imagine people need these cards, absolutely yeah. need these cards. Um, and I don't know if you actually know about another issue that happened that people were actually getting arrested, detained at airports. Did you see Oh, that? stop it, Tig. I, thought, <laughs> I, I, I got, applied for my card, got it. I'm thinking everything's tickety-boo. Yeah. People getting arrested? What, what happened? 
Um, we've had, now let me get this, it's either three, I can't, uh, three or four people were detained at airports because they didn't have their biometric cards. And effectively, the systems at the EU airports that... Oh, is this are, in other countries? This, so they've flown somewhere yeah. else? Yeah, um, no, they've, they've flown to yeah. another EU country and the EU residency that documents or cards that we had, and then the QR code that we had that oh yeah, yeah in the that. system for the withdrawal agreement biometric card wasn't being accepted. Right. So and then... people, so they were getting to um, EU airports, and they were going, "Well, no, this isn't the correct documentation. It's not a biometric card." And they get, and people are going, well, yeah, this is all we've got. This is the legal documents, which of course it was absolutely yeah, as best to, to their best of their knowledge. And then they get, can you come with me, please? Absolutely. And I was, I was, touch, I was, touch your toes, time. <laughs> yeah, well, like you say, you are in your flip flops and shorts, yeah. thinking you're going to have a nice, a few beers in wherever, and then you're being escorted to a room with one of those mirrors in it. My goodness, where I was getting phone calls from. Wow. So people thought of you as the first person to ring. Yeah, when they had their phone call. Like it, was, it was interesting, isn't it? Because you don't sort of quite know how far your reach is. Yeah. And then a sort of, and then it was, it, and it was just, well, it, and so I would be sat here at night and I, I'd suddenly get these, these massive phone calls, you know, sort of like, and I, I go, don't panic, just calm down. We'll sort it out and whatever. And basically, we, we finally, finally managed to get down to what the actual issue was. Because why on earth were these people being read? But what had happened was, was that there's two books that the um, EU border controls have. OK. And in these books, what, what basically happens is, is that it, they, they list the documentation, the correct documentation that people should have if say they're resident in Portugal and they outline the documents. Well, they weren't there, were they? What, well, Seth had forgotten to update the book? Right, okay, maybe. Uh, right. Let's, let's just say I, I still have not quite got to the bottom of who omitted to put the correct documentation in. My goodness, well. It, so, uh, consequently. Seth, Seth the know worst, you by name, don't they? <laughs> the worst part is, the worst part is, is that um, basically these these people were removed and and we had people removed to the UK. It's put on a plane and sent. No to the way! UK. So it didn't. And it wasn't like like we'll just do a quick phone call and everything will be fine to Seth. It's like you're going back to the blighty. I tried that. Right. Tried that. Didn't work. Didn't work. And basically, yeah, they had to get flights and they had to then. Um, one set left, were allowed to eventually get on the as long as it was out of the EU, which they did. But then they had to, they spent thousands getting flights to have to avoid the EU because they were put on the system as overstaying, of course. Oh, my goodness. I had no idea. Teague. This is incredible what you're telling us. Yeah, it's and we're not even at citizenship yet, are we? Sorry? We're, we're not, not even at citizenship. Oh, no, not yet. Let me just you up. <laughs> well, we, well you, you should stick around. Bobby O'Reilly is going to be joining us soon. He might want to join us sooner rather than later and say this himself. You, you, you need to take legal action as a joint group against him personally and as a department and watch what happens. And that does seem to shift things. Your press work seemed to change things. And I know um, some people were suing who were golden visa uh, applicants. Well, you know, you know now in Portugal out. you can – class action lawsuits in Portugal are now possible. They weren't up until recently. So that is a viable oh, option. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. We, yeah, right. and, and that's fine. And obviously, it's something we've considered. And I was looking seriously into last year. But the biggest issue, of course, is finances. Um, uh, we're a volunteer group. We aren't paid, and we do all this for free. So, yeah. and, it, and on a regular basis, presumably, Tig, you think, "What am I doing here? I'm <laughs> volunteering here, and I'm ringing up immigration offices around the world. People are ringing me." And you, and and I, I, I can see exactly why you hulked out that time, and wonder why you might be doing this from time to time. It's it. I think, but what, the reason that I continue this, this is I think there's there's lots of reasons why I do it. Um, but I mean, the biggest issue is is where else do people go? Yeah, right. 
Yeah. Because the, the, even lawyers are completely unaware. I mean, we have got so many lawyers on British in Portugal because they keep up to date with us because the withdrawal agreement is so new and people don't understand it. Um, I had a, I, I know of somebody the other day that was completely misinformed by a lawyer as to, as to what to do, completely misinformed. And it, wow. it's just, and, and that is, and, and of course, I have the additional problem of people say to me, my lawyer, and I say, well, your lawyer's wrong. <laughs> and, oh, okay. and, and of course, right. people, they're a lawyer, they're a lawyer. And I say, yeah, but they're wrong. You need to do this, this and this. And, and, and of course, and they've got, no, fine. Okay. I, I, I've said what you need to do. It's, it's up to you now, you know? Okay. And every so often I will get a call or a message back going, really sorry you were right you know but the, the lawyer tag has been a real issue with me because it's a bit thankfully like I say we've got a stack of lawyers on British in Portugal who just sit there and just get all the information you know which is fine oh, goodness. Which is uh, take, we're, we're gonna we're gonna bring Bobby on a bit early because he's nodding as like he's heard one or two of these things before let's give him a nice big round of applause and a welcome to the good morning Portugal show morning. Bobby all right to you. Well done, um, take, let me by the way. You. Congratulations <laughs> on uh, all the hard work you've been doing. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, hats off to you. Fantastic work. Have you met yeah. before, you two? Are you, no. Are you known no. to each other? Okay. No, no, no. No, no. Actually, You're hearing uh, things here, coming. Bobby, that you were nodding behind the scenes there, thinking, uh, yeah, right on to. Heard it all. Heard it all. And um, agree with her 100%, as you've heard me say many times in this program, that Seth is an absolute disaster. Um, has been from day one. Uh, it's it's um it's a non-functional uh, department within the Portuguese system, and it's like what Dick said as well. It depends nearly who you meet at the counter. Like we, my kids, we're we're here over ten years. My kids at the moment don't have actually cards at the moment, and we're living here ten years, and we're European. And during the COVID time, they were meant to renew, and they wouldn't take any meetings because everyone was working from home as they, as they were. And um, how would you say, uh, we were trying to get another appointment. Now we're more or less getting an appointment sorted out for them to go and get their cards. But we had an issue even coming back from Dubai during COVID because um, at the time you couldn't fly into Portugal unless you actually had a Portuguese residency, uh, etc. Right. from the Dubai. And our kids didn't have, they had their passports, they had that we were, and they were brought into a separate room and questioned, do you know mommy and daddy, etc. All this kind of stuff, where do you live? Yeah, and it's all really? because you are. Yeah, 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 honest to God. So, like, I, I've recognised everything that she said. The, 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 the thing is that Seth is broken up into different departments itself. One has been dealing with Golden Visa, one has been dealing with the normal Portuguese uh, uh, residency issues, etc. as well. And then there's different types of other residencies that they all deal with and um depending on the queue and depending on how many people they have and then if your stack of of um applications so i've one I had one case which was very early days golden visa um <laughs> it's going to sound really strange but i had one guy he was waiting two and a half years for them to find his application mm -hmm. and it was because one of the ladies who was who was in and this was the excuse the lady who was, went to maternity leave and was in her drawer. Right. So, like, the thing is that what I did find, and you just mentioned it now, um, renewals for the Golden Visa and the residency program has been an absolute nightmare for most people. And you're talking about people that are coming from the far side of the world and they're getting appointments for one family member. And it could be their 14-year-old daughter which means they have to come with her. And then they'll say, can we do it while we're here? No, you can't. It's just this particular member, etc. And they, they don't know what's happened is the, the, the law firms have started taking them to court. They basically started taking individual cases to court, but they've gone to all their clients and said, listen, we're going to sue them and we're going to sue them for because actually they're, they're now breaking the law because they have basically three months to reply, as you probably know, but it doesn't matter mm -hmm. here. Um, so break yeah. And as soon as they get the, the actual uh, papers, they get their appointments. And that's what, what's been happening. So they're now prioritizing to stay out of court. And um, I, I know what you're saying from a, from a, um, 
a legal finance point of view, but if you can get one of your law firms that you're dealing with TIG to say that, listen, okay, I'll take on everybody, um, uh, basically uh, as individuals, but as a joint group, and maybe that they can soften the, the cost with regards to the, the legal fees, because it's repetitive stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it might move things along a bit quicker. I don't know. I'm just it's just a suggestion, but I, I see for sure it's working on the on the golden visa side. There's just a huge drag um, and a no care uh, attitude. They don't care, like you said. Um, uh, you get in and the it, it, computer says no. That's all I get the whole time. Is computer says no. But it was it was actually in court though, wasn't there? There was a court case where it was it, it was mm. won because of the delay. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. I, I wrote I wrote an article about it actually. It was um, last yeah. year, I think. Yeah, it was a Brazilian, a young Brazilian lawyer. He he took he took them to court on behalf of the client and won, and yeah. um, overturned presidents. He's been doing it quite a lot, so I think it's yeah, yeah. They're doing Michael, it on a long well, basis. You say, you say you wrote an article. Can you say, tell tell us what skin in the game you have? I mean, as an individual, you're you're applying for citizenship, and we'll come back to Tig to find out what's going on with that for Brits. But you're yeah. as an individual, you're applying for citizenship, and you work with lawyers and and in the legal framework here yeah so i have i have a consultancy business and we ba we mainly work with corporate we mainly work with corporate law firms so we don't tend to work with um law firms that, that work with individuals you know in immigration and that kind of thing but i also edit uh, a magazine that covers the legal sector in spain and portugal and um literally on linkedin i saw a chap who was a, a lawyer um from brazil but he's registered with the portuguese bar association and he shared this post on linkedin saying that he was about to get a positive decision in the court system taking the set to court and effectively suing them because he said it was illegal that the delaying it's exactly what you guys are saying delaying the process and it costing people you know so much money so much stress pain etc cetera, etc cetera. one and then i i wrote this article in the magazine and then he started to get well because people didn't know how to contact him they started to contact me saying can you please put us in touch with this lawyer and um all the all the lawyers in portugal started to um get really get really nervous about this in fact i had people calling me saying um is this guy real? Because our lawyer is saying that, that he's not. I'm like, yeah, he is real. Here's his contact details. Go for it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So um, it was uh, the, the, the thing you've got to imagine is that if you're, um, if you're a corporate law firm in Portugal and you have a small immigration practice, if you're representing the government in a number of cases, you're not going to be, it's not going to be of any interest to go after them in court, right? Because you've got a ma massive conflict of interest. So this guy effectively left the law firm he worked for and he's an independent uh, practitioner now that's why he's able to right. do it yeah yeah so that that's definitely been a been a game changer for sure um maybe they've started to, to to up their game a bit and, and process these applications quicker but it's still a thank nightmare. you for that michael all of this going on behind the scenes amazing so thank you michael back to you tig then you were only going to come on at 8 50 and tell us a little bit about this uh, citizenship problem for Brits. He, are you all right sticking around to discuss yeah, this? Yeah, with yeah, I'm fine actually this morning. Okay. Um, all right. Then. But going back to what you were saying about the lawyers, and and I think that is a bit. It's a big thing, isn't it? Because we all say, we all say, you know, everybody knows everybody in Portugal, yeah. and it's it, it it was interesting because, it, and I think that may be one of the reasons why they're so you know, sort of reluctant to take these cases on. But yeah. for me, you see, I just look at it the opposite way. I just turn it on its head, which is, well, do you want the biggest case probably in in, in the history of, of of Portugal? You know, sort of like uh, when we couldn't get the cards, I was, we, were, we were trying to get lawyers to help that. And it, you know, and it would have been absolutely massive. Massive. I can give you the name of a law firm later on if you want. That okay. Yeah. I'd like it. to take them on because they're, yeah. they're having great success with them. And they're not afraid of them either. Like they're they're yeah. they're in so deep at this stage, regardless of um, uh, how to say it, they can't go any harder against Seth than they already are. So they're just expecting it now at this stage, and they're doing great work. So I can tell you who they are later if you want. That's uh, that's, that's fabulous. My Talk to me afterwards, yeah. But the the <laughs> issue that we've actually got at the moment, going back to why why you asked me to come on, Carl, was because of course. Um, once you've got five years residency, and there's also other conditions that you need to, to apply for residency, which Michael obviously knows um, as well. Um, you have to have a language requirement, more than five years in Portugal, legal residency. I hasten to add, guys, um, residency that's proved. Um, right. What and do you mean by that? Can, what, so, what you to, just to make sure you've been here all the time and you haven't contravened yeah. any any yes. particular you conditions? Have prove, you have to prove that you've been here for more than five years. 
and or, how right. we, if you had just, a residency for five years because the golden exactly. visa don't have to be they only have to be here seven days on any given year so it, it's the proof that you 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 were part of your residency program if you like yeah. okay so you you yeah. you, you, you take the conditions okay. can you can you elaborate on that a bit bobby you, so you're saying with the golden visa there's the, so the criteria for the golden visa was that it's it changed twice, but it, uh, basically it's the same as every other residency. The only difference is that the golden visa residency allowed you that you only had to stay on average of seven days a year in Portugal. A four, it's actually now 14 days over a two-year period um, to renew your residency card. So you didn't have to be a tax resident in Portugal at any given time. Um, you could actually have property here and you had to have some kind of a connection, which means that you had property. But on the fifth year, and I've had, Carla sent me a message yesterday, how many um, passports have we citizenship? About 200 uh, people right. have achieved citizenship through doing the Golden Visa program without actually having to live in Portugal. Um, so effectively, have, 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 you know, could have stayed in Portugal 35 days in, in yeah. five years and they can get residence, they can get citizenship. Yes, but now they were the early days, guys. The guys that at the moment that came in, say, three or four years into the program, they're having a nightmare of even getting renewals and so on and so forth. And um, a lot of places now are the Schengen visa in Portugal used to be no problem getting a five year Schengen visa. You're dealing with people that UK probably no, never has an issue getting the Schengen visa because it's not in Schengen. But once you go outside, as I said, that sort of spray and you go to the Middle East, Far East, etc. Schengen visas are not so readily available and they don't have to say why they don't give it. And if you refused it at any time for any reason without being notified, you can never get it again. So it's you're then barred from traveling to the Schengen area. Yeah. Yeah. So Good we've heaven. had people who've applied for a Schengen visa because the residency card had had uh, ran out and can't get the Schengen visa and they won't say why. And, and who's if who, who to, oversees that then? Is that is that an so EU everyone, department? All European countries, that's yeah. all the Schengen countries, yeah. all basically get to say yay or nay. If one says nay, you don't get the Schengen visa. And if you go come up on a computer with a name that might bounce similar to another name somewhere else or whatever it is, this guy just has to say no, I don't like the look of him, and that's it. That's it. Going back to what I was talking about earlier, so so you related to that, didn't you, Bobby? Where people got detained. Yeah. Then of course there's there's the the system um, that the the EU have the Schengen area have which which bans people from the Schengen area. Those those people that got detained. One of the real issues is is are they on that system? And of course they they were having to fly to the UK to try and get back to Portugal, which is in the Schengen area. They were having to fly back, and it, and it was like, were they going to be let in? Because so yeah. live, let me get this straight then. They could be living here, have bought a house, maybe started a business, got kids in school. They go yeah. away for a holiday in the Schengen area. The border patrol of another country says, we don't like the look of this. You haven't got the right stuff. And yeah. potentially they could be banned from the Schengen area, having been flown back or flown themselves at their own cost back to the UK okay. and never allowed back in the Schengen unit again. That's yeah. exactly what happened. What? Yeah. And Whoa. it was and basically what happened was, of course, was they then got flights from the UK to Portugal because the Portuguese border cards got, you know, Seth, whatever. The majority, no, the majority understood the paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they were letting it. The thing as well is that you have another issue is that yeah. even though, like you actually uh, mentioned earlier on, Carl, that. Um, you get a letter from the government to say, "I'm sorry, we're delaying your 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 residency card." But here, show them this letter at the airport of entry or exit yes. towards Portugal, and they don't recognise it. They don't care what it is. It's not a resident. It's not an official residency document, so they won't let you board the plane. Like we've had, I you, I said to you a long time ago that um, the problem with the Portugal system is simple. They don't do what they promise. They bring out these different systems and they bring out these different programs. And then basically political things change within the meantime. And the people who actually have to do the work, the SEF and the other departments have to do the work, are not notified, number one, and then won't, yeah. uh, how would you say, um, do the work that they don't have to do because no one's told me how to do it yet. I'm waiting on an answer for that. And you've had people who've invested vast amount of money into yeah. Portugal to do these particular programs, et cetera. And then I've had so many people just quit the program because it just wasn't worth the hassle. 
Now, the good news is I have for both the British and for the people outside of Europe, Thank there you. is another way to do it. There is another way to do it. And um, you, you don't have to go through half the loops or half the fees or whatever it is. And it's, it's not a colossal amount of money like a golden visa. And everyone's talking about the D7 and the D7 where you have to move here and so on and so forth. You can do a D7 visa. But the D2 visa will actually allow you to move to Portugal or be a resident of Portugal without actually having to live here. It gives you all the rights of a resident in Portugal, including the, uh, the medical, uh, social security medical, because the system is set up in such a way to attract investors into Portugal. And that person then can to create a company and invest in whatever they'd want to invest in. The snag is they can't be away from Portugal for any given eight months at a time. That's it. Is that it eight months, three months. Is that eight months in twelve or eight months? Actually, any eight months together. So in other words, typically you have to you come to Portugal uh-huh. twice a year. Don't uh, there's no minimum stay. So basically, you come to Portugal, you prove you're in Portugal, you can leave again, come back again at after the eight months, and then you're here for another eight months. So the the rule is eight months consecutive. You can't be away from Portugal. But part of the D two is that if your main business is in another country, you don't have to be a tax resident. And we've tried and tested it, and it works. Yeah, the, wow, the, that's very the, old school. The D two, then it's like vinyl. It's making a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> it's always been there as well. You see, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, but that's not, on, I think we need to take that back a little bit as well, though, because that's for investments, isn't it? So you, is, have- but the investment is it's so the, the the mechanism is this: you 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 start a company, a company, and we all know what it's like to start a company here. It's not difficult. And you have an activity. That activity has to have substance, has to trade in doing something. What that could mean is that that activity, that company could buy a property, a property, any property at any value, rent it out. That's an actual activity. There's your qualification. Yeah, but I, what, the point that I'm actually trying to make is it's going to take quite a bit of money to do that. And there, there's a, a number of people that won't have those sort of finances to be able to do that. I mean, if you've got retirees who just want to retire here and, and, and buy a home, then they're not going to be able to do that. They don't also have to buy a home. So, for example, they can come up with an activity that creates a business. It could be, for example, they rent a house, they rent a room, they have it. There's, there's, there's a lot of different ways to look at how an activity or how a business can be. It doesn't have to involve huge months, uh, cash flow. And for example, the Golden Visa program is to cost about 11,500 euros per person over the five uh, year program, plus the large legal fees and so on and so forth. This doesn't involve anything like it. So I think for people who are looking at a sort of a less stress, less hassle free way of doing it and can. Uh, operate a company. You know what it costs to operate a company in Portugal as well. It's a couple of hundred euros a year for for the accountant and so on and so forth if you have a right accountant. Mm. So what I would say is that there is alternatives to what's there at the minute. And everyone is going... The Golden Visa was the big sale because that's what made everyone money. But the A2 is there, the D2 is there that has been there before and it can be, to use a better word, manipulated to basically work in your favour provided you follow the rules and follow the... Yeah, they, uh, most people that I know, that, uh, that they just want a simple, how do we get into Portugal? You know, and, and I... Not fair enough. That's so my fair. point. It's yeah. not yeah. being simple. This is simple. Yeah. It's a broad side. It's quite amazing. So, Bobby, thank you for introducing that to the mix. But I'm not sure I can cope with any more surprises this morning. I'm... You're, you're... Um... Oh, you could just drop at one point. I have to say, it did drop. There you go. There was one. There was one surprise. There was, this is just burst in with a surprise <laughs> as well. Look, I can't take it. I'm going to hulk out like Tig did that time and write to all the British papers. Oh, man. Okay. So that's amazing news, Bobby. Um, Tig, thank you. And you're kind of still mid flow here, aren't you, with giving us the backstory? Um, I think we've got Carl Hyde who wants to join us to talk about his citizenship journey as well. So we'll bring him on in a little while. But Tig, carry on. Where did we get to? Basically, if you've been resident for more than five years in whatever format, um, all the different conditions, which Michael is well aware of as well, language requirement, 
previous convictions, you have to have checks, all sorts of stuff. So anyway, once, but basically once you've got the paper together, that's fine, you submit it. Um, but the issue is, of course, is that going back to SEF, their system, if you become a Portuguese national, get your citizenship, and you also come under the withdrawal agreement, their system doesn't allow dual status, which of course you are because you're a Portuguese citizen, but you also come under the withdrawal agreement. So you then therefore can't prove because they get, because what you do is when you get a citizenship, they take your WABC off you. So you can't prove it. <laughs> so this is right. the latest. And this is another thing. one of those things, isn't it, where there's the political puff and yes. you know taking things in a new direction and then behind the tail of that is is where all this detail and long grass is that's causing personal yeah. suffering and misery for people and this yeah. is the latest bit because we're getting there now aren't we where people want to become citizens and the yeah. th threat now of the difficulty with the dual citizenship as a result of that because the system is not set up for it yeah, because basically. Um, yeah. and basically it's it's it isn't. It, and I mean, as somebody pointed out to me quite rightly, it isn't the fact that it, if it's not just the fact that you can be, you know, you can have your withdrawal agreement biometric card, but you can be an Irish citizen. But you as yeah. well, you know, but you they, they, their system does not allow both statuses to to use one. It, because what happens is okay. The SEF system is for residency, isn't it? Basically, for immigrants. Yes. It's yeah. for immigrants. Well, you're no longer in, in their head, you don't you no longer need a residency document because you're a citizen of Portugal, so we take it off you. It's right. a simple I've, I've got I've got people who have, have multiple citizenships, including Portuguese, legally. Absolutely. No, it, it's not the legal side of being able to get citizenship. You can get it. I can retain my UK citizenship as, as well as getting Portuguese. And as Michael and I have both done, we've applied for citizenship. But what I'm saying is, is that the that, and it's under the uh, in the Justice Department that you apply for citizenship. You can get citizenship. But what I'm saying is, is they then take off you your residency card because in their head, you no longer need it because you're a citizen of yeah. Portugal. Which is yeah. understandable. I, I get the theory. However, we come under the withdrawal agreement. Therefore, we need to, we may well need to prove in the future that we come under the withdrawal and have no proof because they've taken our card off us. Uh, I see what you mean. OK, so you've got your original nationality. You've got your new yeah. nationality, but you've got no yeah. record thereafter of, of coming through the post-Brexit scenario, which, exactly. which, should, which has and grandfathered uh, rights and responsibilities and all the rest of it that go with it. Yeah. Right. And also, don't forget, because like I was saying to you, the withdrawal agreement is so new, there are a stack of, of cases going through courts waiting to happen for stated cases where, you know, our rights are going to change in the future and whatever. Well, how, and the, how do you prove those rights? The additional problem that other people are having that I would really like to mention, apart from this, um, let me hang on. So let me go back to the citizenship first before I do the five year, 10 year card. Um, with citizenship, I completely forgot what I was going to say now. It's, uh, just too it's just too much this morning, Tig, isn't it? You're, only coming, on, you're um, only coming on for 10 minutes to tell us about the, the what was going on. And now look at us. Yeah. That's, yeah, anyway, no, I'll go on to the five-year, ten-year card. Hopefully I'll remember what I was going to say about citizenship. Um, yeah. yeah, the five, ten-year card. Now, if you've got a five-year, which is called the temporary residency card, there's nothing temporary about it. It's just the name. It's just a label that they stick on because lots of people get confused. It's not. It just means you've been in Portugal less than five years as a legal resident. So that's all it is. Yeah. Then, of course, once you've been here for five years, you exchange it for a 10-year card, which then makes it what they the label they stick on that is that you're permanent. It's throughout the, throughout the EU that, that, that these labels are on the card. That's absolutely fine. Once you have more than five years legal residency in Portugal, you can leave Port under the withdrawal agreement caveat, under the withdrawal agreement, you can leave Portugal for up to five years and come back and automatically pick up your permanent residency. That's a huge right. It's a huge, if you're five years, if you've got a, you're a temporary card holder, it's only six months. So if you've got elderly parents in the UK, 
of course, and you, you've got a, a 10 year permanent card, you can go back and you know you've got five years the way you won't have to go through all the new system of trying to get residency that, that now exists. So it's huge. What SEF are doing is they, people had got five year cards, obviously needed to exchange it for the WABC. People that had expired five-year cards, they reissued with another five-year card instead of a 10-year card. Yeah. How do they prove that they can leave the country for more than five years, less than five years, up to five years? They can't. They can't, can they? No, right, okay. So these are all the things that were not foreseen and that we're working through now. Uh, we're coming Thank to the end of the show. Jake, you've, you've got to come back some other time. And we need to keep an eye on this, if you will. You, yeah. I mean, this is now. You, now you've got Chrome on your on your uh, MacBook. You, this is fairly straightforward. So, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. We've got. I mean, I want to balance things up a little bit because you know this has been a lot of um, you know Seth bashing this morning, and understandably so. Um, and I, but I think it's also always right to remember why we're here in the first place and what we love about the country and why we might want to become citizens, notwithstanding these difficulties and doing something about them, which we seem to have gathered a bit of momentum in doing something about it. Michael, sorry, it's, it's been quite a quiet one for you this morning. Have you got? A, a, no, no, it's been great. It's been fantastic to listen to this. It's been really helpful yeah. for me. So uh, no, 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 not at all. Not oh, that's all. What's good to know. Okay, well, you and Carl Hyde here, who joins us on the screen now. Um, is somebody else who, good morning, Carl. Uh, sorry, you didn't get a round of applause. That's not fair. There you go. Um, so you're in the process. You describe this as being through the citizenship process. Um, and uh, you, it's not been fun. You had a few bumps along the way, but got there in the end. Do you want to tell us a, a, briefly, if you will, your, your, your experience here? Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, uh, I started the process in uh, 2020, just as the pandemic had started. Um, and, and to be honest with you, it was fairly, fairly straightforward, but it took much longer than I was told it was going to take. Um, and there were some bumps along the way. So um, I initially um, sent all my paperwork in. They have a long list of things that you're supposed to need. I didn't need all of it. Uh, a little example of that would be I used to be in the, uh, the RAF a long time ago. Um, some of the documents that I read said if you'd been in the military, then you needed to prove that you were no longer in the military. So I had to get my discharge papers, yes. which was a bit of a pain. Um, had all that uh, translated and notarized, stamped. You know, when I went to the office to hand everything in, they just looked at that and went, what's this? Don't need that. So, you know, that, that was kind of a waste of money. But um, once I had all the documents, they told me it'd take about six months um, for me to be approved. Uh, but that wasn't the uh, that wasn't the case. Um, it actually took uh, two years, uh, and in that time, was basically silence. I couldn't get an update. Uh, they yeah. told me I could log Carl, on. I think Bobby's got to leave us. So, Bobby, thank you very much. Catch up with you soon on this and uh, more more of the news that you gave us. So, cheers, Bobby. Thank you for being here this morning. Thanks, Bobby. And and and, and back to um, and we'll connect you up, Bobby, with uh, Teague. Um, at a later date, but Carl, so two years of radio silence then by the sound of it, and you're wondering what is going on. Well, they told me that you you basically you get a, a password and you log on to the website and you get your updates there, but I never actually got that password. So I would go to my local um, um, office in Almada and yeah. uh, was always advised, it's a strange thing that happens a lot in Portugal, the security guard is the person that's handing out advice, uh, which is rather bizarre. Yes, yeah. true, yes. Yeah. We've all experienced that, yeah. they, they, they know everything and know nothing at the same time. Um, yeah. And they say, they like, well, you'll, you'll get your pass at some point. I'm like, well, you know, it's been a year. I don't have a password. I can't get any updates. Um, anyway, it, it took two years just before I actually got approved, before it was, was processed. And I got mine through marriage, so it was perhaps easier than it is for some people. We've been married um, for, for seven years when I applied. Um, I got a letter from them saying, you uh, you need to send us your Brazilian criminal record. So I was like, what? I, I, you know, I've never never been to Brazil. You know, uh, and what's this about? So apparently, when I completed the forms, um, I didn't have a translator with me because it was um, it was during COVID. So my wife couldn't go in with me. They sat with me, went through the form, ticked all the boxes. Apparently, one of the assistants there had ticked the being resident in Brazil box. And because of that, um, I had to go back to the office, 
they were insisting that I should start the process again or go and get my Brazilian criminal record, which of course doesn't exist. I've never been to Brazil. Um, and in the end, I had to really sort of force the issue um, and make them accept that it was their error. But that was not easy and they did not want to do that. Um, once I'd done that, um, it was kind of approved. Uh, once it was, once I got the letter, which is basically pretty much on the two year point, letter through the post with a Portuguese birth certificate saying, you know, Carl Hyde, you know, basically now Portuguese, you're born again in Portugal. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, actually, yeah you, you get a birth certificate. That's an interesting thing, yeah. isn't it? But then it was another five or six months after that when I finally got the card, uh, which is very nice to have, but it, what it is, it's just a long process and there's a big gap in the middle. So once all your paperwork is submitted, if you've done it correctly, yeah. I think you just have to sit back and be patient and it will happen. It won't happen any more quickly for phoning and badgering. You'll just send yourself... Uh, well, you'll make you yourself have to go with it. Yeah. It puts the bottom of the pile, don't you, if you keep doing that. Anyway, yeah. but going back now, did you... Um, I take it that you had to do a UK criminal records check? Nope. Oh, that um, oh, sorry. Well, 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 I, I did actually, yeah. Um, I did the UK the, the, the CRB check. Um, everything that I did, I had notarized. So I had it translated and notarized. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did that with everything. Uh, in yeah. fact, that was a mistake I made. I sent them my, I sent them my birth certificate. For some reason, I don't know why. I must have had a, you know, uh, a bit of brain freeze. I sent them the the original document and what Ooh. they needed, the translated and notarized version. So everything yeah. that you do, translate, notarize, uh, and and send that in. But um, did yeah. you ask? Did they ask you? I, I think you you because I know that sort of like the um, the wait time at the minute is anything between two and three years. That's what I've and heard. I think yeah. that you have maybe you actually did you 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 were actually believe it or not fast tracked because it was through marriage. So you you yeah. may have still been waiting. You know I'm not sure about that because I, I don't I think they, I don't think they kind of discriminate on, on that kind of basis. When I actually first went to the office in Almada to ask, uh, you know, uh, we want to start the process to get citizenship, they said, oh, you've not lived here. You've got to live here for five years. So we were like, no. And we actually had, my wife's aunt was with us, so there was no language barrier. It's like, no, we, we've been married for seven years. And they said, no, you've got to have lived here for five years. So I said, no, the rules are that if you've been married, I think it was for over five years, then, you know, I'm entitled to citizenship. And they actually said, and these were their words, well, you might want to go to the Lisbon office because they might do it like that in Lisbon, but in this office, we do it this way. And that's literally what they said. So basically, we've got our own rules and we're going to do it our way. And again, I had to push back on that and say, no, these are the rules. These are the rules for the entire country. And I have a, I have a right. Um, and again, you've got to push politely, but you've got to get your message across. Really? Absolutely. Else, that's another thing to do. If you're not getting the answer that you that you want and that you deserve, then maybe come back a different day and speak to somebody else because that happens it's, a lot. It's know? one of the things that I do say to people: whatever you do, be 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 polite because if you start getting cross, you will get absolutely nowhere. But if you're if you're polite and sit there and just sit there and be firm just like no this is, this is a system and you just sit there and 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 i've done that a couple of times and i have but going back to um what you actually asked me on the show for which we still haven't discussed <laughs> amazing isn't it you've got to come back tig i think we need we need to do a regular update on this but go on um was the fact that the actually taking office of our WABCs with citizenship, and which, and, and I take it, have you, if you had, you had yours taken off you, didn't you, Carl? The Carl Hyde, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what taken off me? Your, your, your residency card. card. Well, I didn't have one because I got this last year, so I'm trying to think with regards to residency. I actually oh, didn't your citizenship. Get yeah, your citizenship pre uh, yeah. preempted I, your. I still your... get emails telling me to go for my um, residency appointment. Which I just think right. well, I was in that process. Ah, uh, okay. He's, he's Portuguese now. He's That's Portuguese now. Yeah. Yeah. You had EU residency. You hadn't got our the WABC residency. No, that's yeah. okay. Um, yeah. But basically, what it is, of course, is that um, it isn't just Portugal that are taking people's WABCs off them. It, we've got right. it across Europe. We have it yes. across Europe. And the and I was I was asked the other day is because I'm in the system and whatever and and 
the Portugal has been spoken to about this. Um, as far as I'm aware, it is still happening that people are having their WABCs taken off them. And I was asked if I would be a test case. Right. Um, so, and of course, the answer was yes. Gosh, you know, I've been doing this so long now, and I'm probably in so much trouble anyway. Why not? Thank you for the team. Um, Thank you for the team, Tig. Yes. Yeah, it's you know, sort of, it's not going to make any difference to me now, because um, you know, sort of, Portuguese government are well aware of who I am. So, <laughs> it's, no, 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 no. seriously though, do yeah. you fear some sort of prejudice on that basis? I mean, um, I can understand if you do. I don't know if I fear it. I don't know if I fear it. Um, I'm aware, obviously, that I've, because of, I mean, when you just think back to, I mean, forget the five years before this. If you just think back to last year in August, um, I mean, it was a three-week press campaign that I did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it you know, it forced the government's hand. And they know, they know who I am. You are, your head was well and truly above the parapet. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's yeah. my head above the parapet. Um, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's, there's absolutely, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like Carl, you know, there's, there's absolutely no reason why citizenship could be refused. Absolutely yeah. no reason at all. Um, it's, um, yeah, you you know, it, it's just people get upset at times, don't they? And I've upset them. They do. Them. They do. Yeah. Now, I, I need to conclude the show here. And, and on the basis that I would love to invite you back again. It's been amazing talking to you this morning. We've learned a lot. And I've found out things I didn't know. I feel like I've been sort of blissfully ignorant and unaware. Ignorance has been. Good. It's, yeah, you know, I, you know, I, I'm glad of that. But I, I'm also yeah. very concerned about the difficulties some other people have been having. And this is a good platform to discuss those and get them addressed. So do please come back and do that. Thanks, Carl, for joining us. Um, I want to kind of sort of, you know, we've, we've kind of zeroed in, haven't we, on some of the difficulties. I'd like to zoom back out if we can, um, because Jason's made some very interesting points this morning as well. Um, you know, he says, after listening, um, I beginning to think we are incredibly lucky with all the different agencies to obtain our residency under the withdrawal treaty because uh, it's all relative, isn't it? It took a little time, but it was relatively stress free. Thank you, Portugal. And again, notwithstanding the difficulties that some individuals have faced. And I think it's important that we do something to help those people. And the bigger point here that I would agree with with Jason is I don't think that the problems being described concerning immigration processing is endemic to Portugal. That's true as well, isn't it? Like you, like you made mention, Tig, of all the states of the Schengen area will be operating in a similar way and there will be some you know, various uh, spectrum of prejudices and residues that affect British people in relation to the EU. But we are talking about a mass migration of people around the world. We're talking about bulging, breaking immigration forces and some going through a reorganisation like CEFAR. It's a right old mess, isn't it? And yeah. We have to remember that, that, you know, it is the kind of government front end that we're dealing with here and they're not doing a very good job of it. And the gov it's the government front end of a country we absolutely love, which makes all of this trouble hopefully worthwhile in the end. Is that how you see it, T? Um, I know. I mean, obviously, because I, I just deal with the withdrawal agreement. So um, and, and because I lead British in Portugal, mm. um, we regularly have meetings between the group leaders across the EU, across the Schengen area. So right. and we compare and and I mean this morning for instance, there's um it's being presented to the EU Commission all the issues in Portugal. Oh, really? uh, yeah, I was asked to do a report so they can all the issues are there for them to see. It's you know it it, it is what it is, but also all the issues that are in the other EU countries. Yeah. Um and there's quite a few countries that are taking our, our WABC's office. It's not just Portugal. And I just think they just don't know. They probably just do not know. It's what, a you mess, know, a mess what, that we're, we, it's a mess in, like a work in progress. It's a mess it's in probably, progress. It's things haven't been planned for properly. And then agreements are coming to an end and things like this. And there's just nothing in place, perhaps, to, to, to suitably replace what, what's gone before. You're right. It's a common story. It's a common story, isn't it? This is not unusual that this hasn't been thought through correctly and CEF are going through their own reorganisation as well. But I think I think that with CEF on this one, I think it's just they just don't know because they always, they take everybody's residency off them. doesn't matter who they are. It's just part of the process. But yeah. nobody's told them that people that come under the withdrawal agreement, you shouldn't be doing that. Apart from you, Tig. So keep up the good work. 
um, okay. tell, telling telling the, the government and its immigration force what should be happening. Thank you for doing all that work behind the scenes. And sorry it's been so stressful and you've had these uh, terrible moments and hearing of these terrible, you know, things that happen to people during this process. Please use this platform and this and, and the, the, the program here to bring more publicity okay. and also... Uh, how we can help people, basically. I mean, that's the bottom line, is, is how we can help and support people who find themselves in these difficult situations. Tig, great to meet you in person. I'm sorry to cut it off there, but I do have to go to Lisbon now. It's, it's, a, it's a busy day today. Good luck with um, how it turns out with the EU Commission yes, report as well. Keep us informed. Carl, yeah. thank you for joining us. Thank you both. Okay. A big round of applause yeah. to you both. And thanks for all the comments that I didn't get to today. So we'll leave it there, and we will be back tomorrow morning with the Portuguese, I'm sure I'll have something to say about it, and Katia Lima, who is asking the question, what is it to be Portuguese, essentially? Something that Carl Hyde might come back and talk about, given that he's Portuguese now. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Bye. In Portugal, there's a YouTube show full of fun facts you need. Carl brings a bell and the members show to the GMP morning show. Featured guests will come and they will blow your mind. The audience will do so in kind. The little vanity mixed with some insanity on the morning show with GMP. Good morning, Portugal, and I'd like to welcome you to another fantastic day. Hey, you, Gumper.